Jämtland, Sweden is one of the outdoor meccas of Europe. The land is full of natural beauty, and with 24 hours of daylight during the summer months, the forests simply burst with life. While many people think of Sweden as being flat, there are mountains and spectacular waterfalls as rivers carve their way through the lush countryside to reach the sea. In Jämtland, awe-inspiring landscapes are never far away. With such a huge amount of pristine wilderness to be found in all directions, there are endless opportunities for outdoor adventure. And so, to kick off my trip, I'm meeting up with Karin to get a lay of the land from the top of Araskutan, one of the country's most popular mountains. There you can see, you can see all the downhill routes on that side. That's for all the, the yeah. mountain biking. But you're also going to see some that we're going to go over also. Yeah. So it's, uh, it looks like a blast. Karin explains that where we see a wonderful wilderness playground, for the Sami people, this has been a place of work and home for generations. And so, as we explore the area, we need to show respect for the land, avoid interfering with the wildlife, and leave no trace of our passing. So nice. So now we are at the 63rd latitude, so it's rather high up in the world, and uh, this is Jämtalhärjedalen, a region that in Sweden is in the middle of the country. So this is a place where we have beautiful seasons and a lot to offer to guests that would like to come here. All of us that live here, we are of course very proud of where we live. And uh, it's a place where we love our nature, we love our people and we love our culture. Uh, and we have a beautiful area to hike and also of course a lot of other activities like foraging, biking, whatever you would like to see. So uh, what's the story with this, uh, the Red Hut? Oh, that's a waffle place. Yeah. That's the waffle house. So, so that's where we go when we're going to get the best waffles. Sadly, there's no time for waffles. Because Karen and I are setting off on a backpacking adventure. And joining us, we've got Martin, a local guide and chef. We're heading deep into the wilderness and into the hills to a well-known backcountry lodge. Today we're heading to Lunderstugan. Lunderstugan? Yes, we're going through the forest and yeah. up to the mountains. Ah, oh, sounds awesome. Beautiful day, ready to get after it. Even though this is only my first full day in Sweden, I can already say that Swedes are some of the most kind and welcoming people on the planet. Which is why I'm not surprised that one of the most important Swedish customs revolves around making time for friends. Yeah, I think we're getting ready for some lunch. What, yeah. what do you think? I'm ready. Yeah. I keep hearing about the Sika. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're not going to miss it. Yes. Oh, I can't. Eat, right? Is it time? Yeah. It's time for Fika? Yeah. My first Let's one. Let's bring it. I am so excited. <laughs> I got to experience this Swedish tradition. <laughs> Thanks for bringing the fresh coffee. Yeah. It's great to get the chocolates. Do you want some? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, it hits the spot when you're on the trail. Fika is a daily ritual that any true Swede will never miss. It's an important part of their culture, which involves taking a break and enjoying the company of friends and colleagues while sharing a cup of coffee and something to eat. So we're making our way back to a mountain cabin uh, in the woods tonight. We're hiking through this spectacular mountain countryside and the fall colors are going crazy. And I'm absolutely loving it. Can't wait to spend the night uh, off in the back country here tonight. We continue our way up into the mountains and the forest bursts with color around us. One of the coolest things about Sweden is that they have a significant number of well-maintained backcountry huts for backpackers and skiers to enjoy throughout the year. And so, as a great first day of exploring comes to an end, we relax, refuel, and prepare ourselves for another day of adventure in Jämtland's spectacular backcountry. Hello, thank you so much. Oh, this was fantastic. I'd love to return. It's a special time of year here in Sweden, and not just because of the beautiful fall colors. We are heading north into the land of the Sami people who are hard at work. The Sami are reindeer herders 
and their life is uniquely tied to the hundreds of thousands of reindeer that roam northern Sweden. I'm super excited about today. I have a really unique opportunity to meet up with Per Erik, and he is from the Sami people. The Sami are the native people, the indigenous people of the region. And uh, something that's happening right now is they are herding and marking the reindeer calves. So I am really excited about this. It's gonna be cool. I think I'm gonna get a chance to jump in the pen with Per Erik, and uh, yeah. It's gonna be interesting. So you right now you're looking for yeah. a calf that doesn't looking have for, a marked, yeah. like that one. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to wrestle it, it yeah. and then mark yeah. it? Yeah. Oh wow! And you say that they can't really feel the the no, marking. No, they they don't feel pain. They really? They, they can't feel it. Yeah, because the, the calf was very calm. Yeah, very calm. Yeah. I have a new appreciation for how much the land and all that lives on it means to the Sami people. It's easy to see how a growth in tourism could impact their way of life. As visitors, it's our responsibility to show the land, animals, and Sami people the utmost respect. This is just a wild experience. I don't know if I've ever seen anything quite like it, but to be in the pen with Pit Eric and all these reindeers, man, this is special. With the calves marked and the reindeer released back into the wild to fend for themselves through the winter, Karen, Martin, and I head back on the trail. One of the things I'm quickly learning in Sweden is just how central the earth is to life here. Everyone loves being outside, breathing fresh air, and interacting with nature. It's a cool, fresh, crisp, and vibrant landscape. Mmm, cold. That is so good. Yeah. So there's nothing in the water that would contaminate it here? No, not, not while it's uh, this cold and flowing. Yeah. If there is a lot of reindeer or a lot of uh, other animals and yeah. very dry in the summer, sure. it might be. But you think it's bad. safe? Yeah. Now, all right, I'm trusting you. Yeah, I'm my drinking. intestines. Yeah, <laughs> I'm drinking all I can here. We continue on our way to meet the newest members of our hiking team, Ulis and Frost. Hello. Hi. I'm Eric. Ulis. Ulis, nice yeah. to meet you. This is Frost. Frost. Mm -hmm. Hello, Frost. How friendly is Frost? Uh, he doesn't like being pet by people he doesn't know very much. Okay. But he's fine hanging around. Well, like want to join us for Fika? Yeah. Please. All right, yeah. Not surprisingly, foraging is a way of life in Jamtland, and the chanterelles are a prized possession. With Chef Martin on the job, our midday snack is a pure delicacy. But we're not done there, because Ulla says she has another local treat to share with me. Are you ready to try a traditional Swedish drink? I'm a little nervous, but yes, I'm ready. It's an old, famous drink. Oh yeah? Need to try first. I think that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Still seem to be alive. Mm. Yeah, it's medicine. Mm. What is it? <laughs> Could you give it a guess? What do you think it tastes like? Well, there's definitely alcohol in it. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that. You want to know the part? Yeah. It's the anal glands. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Anal it's... glands of beaver. Yeah. You can have it back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no wonder. It's easy to see why Jamtland is called the lungs of Europe. The air is clean, and the wilderness is healthy and filled with life. I'm pretty lucky to experience this place with people that love the outdoors as much as I do. Because for me, the only thing better than being outside is getting to share those times with friends. As we set up camp for the night, we're joined by Boo Boo, a local legend who has more than a few stories about the area and is always happy to share them. Stockholm have done measurement for 30 years right on top of Åreskuta, the mountain. And uh, they have measured the cleanest air in the world many times. Really? Yeah, so it's not it's a right coincidence here. that wow. people started to come here from, from the cities where they had bad air, you know, in those times, those days they were making 
firing coal everywhere. And, so. yeah. and they had trouble with the asthma and things. And when they came here, they realized, hmm, I feel much better here. Yeah. And those are called, in Swedish, Luftgäster, air guests. They so built the, the cable car, the small It's train. always fascinating to hear from someone who is so knowledgeable and passionate about their homeland. And what better way to hear those stories than around a campfire deep in the backcountry. As the sun begins to set on our final night in the backcountry, I'm a little worried that Boo Boo will pull out another traditional drink for me to sample. But more so, I'm sad at the thought of our little fellowship disbanding. In just a couple of days, I've made great new friends, discovered a remarkable part of our natural world, and learned a lot about the Swedish way of life. I'm surprised by the mountains and uh, the fall colors and just like the, the, the natural environment. Back in the town of Ore, it's time to change the pace a little. And so I'm meeting up with professional athletes, Jackie and Reina. The two make their living competing in ski competitions all over the world. But in the summer today? months, they take advantage of the incredible terrain in Jampland to stay fit and train through mountain biking. Ore is home to some of the best mountain biking trails around. And the trails here range from mellow cross country to steep, fast and muddy downhill. I know I'm going to need to bring my A-game in order to keep up with this dynamic duo. So Ore as a destination for mountain biking is uh, world class, I think. I've been around a few places. Uh, we have a great bike park, a lot of, uh, and a pretty dedicated bike club that builds trails out in the woods. And uh, what I think makes it really special is that we have these really long tours where you can go out to like mountain cabins and uh, so not just a little loop. Uh, and the last few years, there's also been built much more towards uh, entry level and beginners, uh, easier trails. Uh, so it's really cool to see the development over the years. The cross country is developing pretty rapidly right now. And we have a ton of old hiking trails you can use. As a bike destination, it's going to be as good as a winter destination eventually. That's the moon. Yeah, I mean, down from the road here to Lodostugan, it's, it's five minutes on the road. Yeah, let's go down to the road. The hiking trail don't go all the way through. Or has the, what I think is the biggest uh, downhill park in Scandinavia. So we have a lot of Norwegians coming in uh, here and uh, a lot of people from down south. Uh, so it's, it's pretty great. What we get going for us is, of course, the high alpine terrain, you can take the tram right up and get almost a thousand vertical meters riding down. Uh, so that's pretty cool. With a few flowy sections under our belt, I find myself following the pair to some of the harder trails that I know will test my skills. But as they say, no pain, no gain. And I have my sights set on making some real gains today. No! You okay? Yeah. Slick. Yeah. Good job. So what makes Ore special to me, I think, it's the people that are here. Uh, everyone is like kind of active outdoors. They, when you ask someone what they do, you don't, you don't expect to hear what they do for a profession. You ask, what are you doing in your spare time, basically? That's, that's kind of a hidden message in, in that. So it seems like people here prioritize their spare time and their outdoor activities more than anything else. And that's the type of place I want to live in. A little beaten and a little bruised, I'm happy to swap my mountain bike for hiking boots once again. I'm even happier knowing that we're on our way to meet Chef Lena Flatten, who is well known for her wildcraft. Hi, how's it going? I'm, I'm fine, Eric. how are you? Lena, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. So, you're up for some tea? Absolutely, wow. This looks yeah. lovely here. Yeah, it's the um, shaga tea. You have shaga tea? Yeah, what, exactly. what is that? It's made from the, uh, the birch. Like the bark? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lumps on the bark. Yeah. So, a couple Oh, thank you. I just met up with Lena. She's a local chef. And uh, I'm really excited about today. I'm gonna get to do some fishing here on the lake and we're gonna go forage. And then we're gonna make some amazing meals based on what we find and what we catch. 
Yeah, what are we uh, what are we looking for today? So now we will look for the autumn uh, mushrooms. Autumn and mushrooms. It's, yeah, and it's more like cantarelles now. Cantarelles. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I'm really excited to see some yeah. of those in the wild. <laughs> Yeah, so I see mushrooms everywhere out here. Yeah. But you're being very selective. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're walking I'm, by most of them. What are you looking for? I'm looking for, uh, first of all, the trees. So when I know we have the birch, this one is the birch mushroom. That's the birch yeah. mushroom. Yeah, it's an old one. Okay. But you see also the tree yeah. is here, and then you know that this is perfect. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit broke there because but this one is so nice. So be good, nice for good job. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So here, look at the trees. Yeah. About right here? Yeah. Is this a good one? <laughs> it's a really good one. Oh yeah? A really good one. You see, it's, oh, yeah. it's growing, yeah. And it's, it's a big one. And you see yeah. we, why we don't cut it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can get extra yeah. mushroom pole. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Having found all the fungi we'll need for our meal, it's time to catch some fish. Now, I wish I could say that I was a highly skilled angler, but the truth of the matter is, I'll be happy hooking into anything, as long as it isn't my own leg. Should I get in first? Yeah, yeah, you should. Yeah? I just hold the boat. You hold the boat for me. Yeah. Graceful as a swan. Okay, yeah, there yeah. you go. The good news is that Lena says the lakes in the area hold lots of trout, including some real monsters. And because the lakes receive so little fishing pressure, even I should be able to catch us some dinner. What does it mean to you and why, why is it important to you? Uh, having like the natural connection with your food like this. Yeah, like this fish now, it's gonna taste much, much better yeah. because you caught it yourself. Yeah. So you will eat it with uh, respect. So this one we're gonna um, we're gonna put it in some water and some salt, yeah. and we're gonna make a nice stock for the soup. Yeah. And the other one we're just gonna grill it directly on the fire. Get some fillets. Yes. I do the two first, and you do the the other twelve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. That's the amount fair. of work that you've put yeah, into yeah. all the rest of it, that would, <laughs> that'd be fair. I feel like my experiences here in Sweden have been really diverse. Being able to be on the mountains and uh, in the reindeer pens with Ped Erik, and then here just in the countryside having the fantastic, the most fantastic culinary experiences in my life. This has been so cool out here. And if you look around, it doesn't really get much more epic than this. To say that Sweden and Jämtland has been full of surprises would be a real understatement. The landscape is unlike anything I've seen and the people are deeply connected with the outdoors. One of the biggest examples of that profound connection has been through food. And so, as I reflect back on my time in Sweden, while sharing one of the best meals of my life, I can't help but be thankful. And not just for this trip, but for the incredible outdoor playgrounds that can be found throughout our amazing world.